We got Macy Barber back here on the program. She's going to be taking on JJ Aldrich at uh, UFC Nashville on March 23rd. Macy, how are you? I'm doing awesome. How are you? I'm doing great. I appreciate you doing this. It's like Friday evening right now. Um, I saw you on uh, Instagram. You were at Daytona doing some cool stuff there. What what was that all about? I was. I got offered a huge opportunity to go to Daytona 500, and um, I went out and, and got to meet like the Richard Childress Racing. Um, the whole team from there. I got to spend a lot of time with Austin Dillon, who's guys number three. And um, I made a lot of good connections. You know, I went out there for, um, you know, just kind of, kind of get in that world. There's a lot of untouched potential for me there um, from from being in, like, the sponsorship side of, like, meeting with big companies, and that pro, um, Reebok I'm trying to work with, uh, the NRA, um, just different things like that. A lot of a lot of things are up my alley, you know. Uh, different different uh, companies like Ford or Toyota, and I mean, also just to be around uh, those athletes, it was a huge opportunity. I have never had so much fun in my entire life, and it wasn't even just about the race. It was more so about um, going and meeting other athletes in a completely different sport and seeing how their mentality is. And understanding that you know they're trying to be the best as they can, the best that they can be at what they're doing. And um, you know, I got to be in the back when when they had their motivational speech and when they said their prayer and like all of just to see the mentality and the and the back the backside of what goes into that sport was huge because you know a lot of people just view it as oh they're just getting in a car and driving and it's not that there's so much more to it and um, it was really motivating. And um, this is incredible. Good. It's good to be in the Macy Barber business these days. Looks like a lot of things on the horizon, which is uh, very exciting. Um, but let's talk about this matchup. I think the big thing that everyone sort of saw when they announced it was that you're moving up to flyweight for this fight. Uh, how did you come to that decision? Uh, we decided that right after the, the fight in November. So um, I struggled a lot with nutrition and being able to stay in you know, I'm not disciplined, but because I am almost too disciplined. You know, I've, I've, um, when I decided to start fighting, uh, I went with the first nutritionist that I had, and that was um, one that I thought and was, was very trustworthy and, and um, was credible because of where she was at. And so I went with her, and, and she put me on a really, really restrictive diet. And I got the, from, like, you know, I used to walk around at, like, 132 pounds, right? And so my first cut to 115 was easy, but I didn't realize how low of calories I was on. I was like on like six, five to six hundred calories a day for almost two days. And so my body responded well to the diet, but I didn't know, you know, because I'm just like, all right, come to the gym, I'm going to do it. Um, so that kind of started it. And then so I made that fight and it was perfect. Uh, obviously, I don't know what my performance would have been like if that fight was to go all three rounds. So who knows if it was that perfect. Um, but after that, you know, after that fight, I tried to go back up, and uh, I knew that I had another fight, so I tried to cut again. That next cut was a little bit harder because I always put on the same diet, and uh, my body responded still, but not as well. Um, and then the next one, obviously, I missed the next fight because of a couple of personal issues, and uh, and also because that diet was like you can't keep cutting calories, cutting calories, cutting calories, increasing your workload. So um, it just kept getting harder, and, and this last fight was 115. Um, I was working with uh, Jordan Lockhart, and, um, you know, I had a lot of nutrition that have been like, you know, we'll get you back up, you know, we got to put you back up on higher calories, because for the past year and a half to two years now, I hadn't been above a thousand calories, and that's a lot, because, you know, I mean, that's not a lot for the amount of training that I was doing. And so, my last cut, uh, I had 12 weeks to give a camp, and I started out on a, a 12-week diet plan. Uh, and each week I would send my weight. I'm like, all right, here's my weight. I like, to keep following the program. Here's my weight. Keep following the program. You know, and it wasn't dropping. It started to drop a little bit. But then I started to train a little more. And my weight started to go up. And um, I went into fight week at 133 pounds. And I cut 18 pounds. And I almost missed, I almed, missed weight, right? I, I missed. And I had to do it again. You know, I had to finish the cut. I had like an hour allowance. And uh, it, was, it was a bad, it was a bad cut. And, and, um. So that was kind of like we we've, we've been saying it, you know, we got to get figured out, we got to get figured out because I want to fight because I know that I'm going to be really good there. Um, but I also put on her 
time that my body wants to keep, you know, my body wants to keep weight on it, it wants to, to go back to that. So um, I went after the UFCPI in Vegas the day after the fight, and they did a bunch of tests, and they, they found out that my resting metabolic rate was decreased by 50%. And so that was extremely bad. You know, my metabolism wasn't where it's hard. Um, personal, personal health. Uh, you know, I, my, my hormones weren't working right. Um, I just was in rough shape. So they were like, we need to put you on a reverse diet. We can't just do it. It's not a gradual one. They put me from, I went from 1,000 calories, 22 to 2,500 calories. Like, they just switched it. And uh, it was what my body needed. But also, I increased in weight, right? So I knew that, that going into that, I was going to gain more weight um, and that it was going to be a process because a lot of us women, we go through this thing where we, we view ourselves, like we, we are so hard on ourselves and how we look and how we feel. And we more so care about how we look than how we feel. And so my whole thing with that was, okay, you're going to have to get over this. And you're going to put on some body fat. You're going to put on some weight. And that's what happened, you know, I put on some weight, and I also knew that I wanted to fight again. I'm like, if I start this, I'm not going to not fight. So the next best thing is to go up while we're trying to heal my body. So I'm still in the healing phase of trying to get my metabolism back up, because I went back out to the PI, and um, it's still not up to where we want it, but it was a little bit better. I was at, like, negative 20%. So I was halfway back. Uh, I got a lot of my hormones slowly getting figured out. Um, but yeah, that's just a that's just a struggle for us is because I, I follow the plan too much to the point where, you know, you tell me what to do, I'm gonna do it and I don't care how I feel. I'm just gonna do what you tell me to do. Um, because I trust you, you know, if you're a professional in that sport, I know I'm not. I know I'm not a professional in the in the nutrition side of things. So um, yeah, I just put a little too much faith in, in the people and and um, I, I think I put them in the wrong people at first and now now we're getting it figured out, you know, I'm working with the highest level, you know, I'm out at the PI and they're running the real test and they're um, doing all of that. So my weight went up and I knew I wanted to fight still, so 125 it is. And uh, I feel great, you know, I mean, my past fights, even, so all of my past fights, I've never had a fight off of higher than a thousand dollars. So my king. So we'll see. I mean, I, I feel like this is going to be a better like physically, how I feel will be better, you know. Um, obviously, because I increased in weight and now I have another cut, it's not, I'm still on a decrease of calories. So um, I, I think the next two fights are still going to be a little bit uh, not perfect of, of where I want to be nutritionally, but um, I'm on the road back to being where I should be, which is good because, you know, this young in my career is something to figure out now rather than later. Yeah, no, no, that's smart. And and it's funny because every interview we've done in the past, I mean, the weight cut always comes up because it's there's so much focus on it. So how has it been this camp not having to focus as much on the cut and just, you know, focusing on the training camp? Um, it's a lot better. You know, obviously I still have to focus on it because um, I, I don't think people understand how wrecked my body was. Uh, but it has been way better. I feel way better. Um, we're able to, to fuel my training a lot uh a lot smarter um, in terms of like energy and recovery and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I definitely feel way better. Way better. I feel alive. I, I actually go into the gym and I'm happier. Um, not that I wasn't happy, you know, because like, like this is what we do. So I enjoy it anyway. But it's definitely, you know, when your body's feeling like it's being fed the right stuff, you definitely feel a lot, a lot more alive, I guess, to that effect. No, I agree. That that sounds great. Um, let's talk about the opponent, JJ Aldrich. Uh, she also trains in Colorado. I know she trains uh, at, uh, I believe it's Genesis. Uh, did you ever cross train with her in the past, or I guess you guys never, uh, you know, came in contact? I have. I, I have cross trained with her. Um, quite a, I wouldn't say like a ton, but I have cross trained with her quite a bit. Um, whether we were both helping off the road, or you know, just just happened to be in the same gym. Um, but yeah, we've definitely got a, a quite a bit of work in, and um, yeah, I mean, it's been good. It, it was a little while ago, so yeah, I respect her a ton. You know, she's she's definitely solid, and she's she's um, she's solid, but she's not she's not much. 
doing a whole lot of different things. She just is really good at what she does, and that's the basic. You know, she, she has a basic down, and she's solid. You know, she's really, really good at that. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to see how it goes. Yeah, it's an exciting matchup. Um, now, for training camp, I, I'm kind of been trying to follow along. So I, I know you've done a little bit of cross training at Rufus Sport, and then uh, obviously right. at, uh, at at fact at Factory X as well. Um, so how's that been going? It's been going great. Yeah, uh, my family and I actually moved out to Wisconsin. Um, that's why I'm was out in the sport. Um, so I'm just kind of like trying to get back into it. And then when I got the call and, and decided and took this fight, and I got an opponent game. Uh, instantly, I was like, I know the coach I have to go to, and I know the team I want to, like, the people I need to go with. And, um, yeah, that's Mark Montoya, Matt Kenya, and, um, and uh, Izzy Martinez. Although I haven't gotten to do a ton of work with him yet, uh, because, you know, he's busy with John. But, um, you know, ultimately, those are those are three that are in my corner for this fight. Uh, I'm actually out here at Factory X right now. I'm, I'm, I, I, I could see the picture of Mark behind you. I figured you were there, but I didn't want to say anything. So, yeah, that's that's good. I love that picture. That's such a good picture. Um, yeah, so I'm out here now. Uh, I just got sparring, and then I did some uh, did some cardio on the hello and while I was sparring too. And um, but yeah, no, I I left Wisconsin in in January, which seems like so long ago. I, I'm really with my family now. Yeah, you know, that point where I'm like, oh, I just want to be home. Um, but yeah, so I left Wisconsin. I drove myself to Utah. And I spent uh, like three weeks out there with Matt Pena, and we just, you know, kept working boxing, boxing, boxing every day. And I got to work with um, uh, a team out there at the pit uh, with Court McGee. I just kind of cross trained, you know, got extra work in for their and their team there um, for just kind of like rounds and MMA and wrestling and all of that while I was also getting my working with uh, Matt Pena. And then um, I came out here to, to Colorado, and Mark and I have been putting work in and I've gotten to see uh the work in here with Otter Mill. Um but yeah, it's been really good. How do you see this fight playing out on the twenty third? Are we gonna see another finish do you feel like? Yeah, I really do. Uh I, I think that's what's gonna happen. Um you know I was I was reading some stuff uh the other day and I came across some things that you know, I don't know how I'm going to win, I just know that I'm going to. And that's kind of how I always feel. It's like I don't know exactly how it's going to be finished or how it's going to go down, but um, I just I just trust in the people that I work with, and I just know I'm going to win, you know. Um, but yeah, we've had, we've had a solid camp, and and I'm excited to see how it goes. You know, we just keep, keep improving my game and my training and and elevating it, and we're just going to see how it how it plays out. But again, we're just trying to trying to build my reactions and my game to where, you know, nothing really surprises us and we're ready for anything. This is a pretty new division, flyweight. Uh, you know, in terms of you know fighters moving up the ranks and everything like that. Um, where do you feel like a win would put you? Because it, again, it's just so wide open at the moment; no one really knows. And, you know, you can get a win uh, impressively and really uh, move up the ranks. Um. Yeah. Honestly, uh, we'll be smart about it, but I'm not in a rush. You know, I I don't know. You know, I just want to keep getting wins and I want to keep putting on good performances because the more you can perform the more people want to watch you. The more people want to watch you, the more eyes you have on you, the better it is for the company, the better it is for your success, and it's just all around a good a good win. Um, in terms of long-term goals, I mean, I have set the, the goal for the MSU OC champion, and, I, and uh, I'm, not, I'm not ever going to go back on that because that is something that I've set. But I think a lot of people, especially on social media, have put it out there, you know, like, oh, yeah, next fight is your title shot, or next fight is your – Whatever, and of course, that's just fans that get excited, but to me, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa guys, it's like it. I'm still 20. I have almost three years, right? I have like three three years or something like that until I'm 23 in, in eight months or however old it is. I'm like, you guys have to realize that this takes time, and I don't want to just rush into anything. I want to I want to make sure that I put on good performances, and I build my, my uh, fan base, and I build my – um, my career around people that want to watch me fight. And then, you know, the more that people want to watch you fight, the more you get closer to that title shot. Um, but yeah, just staying relevant and staying fighting is more so what I'm concerned with. You know, I'm not concerned with, oh, hey, let's get the title shot next, next month or let's get the title shot next, next year or whatever. Um, I know it's going to come regardless. So 
as long as I just keep fighting, that's ultimately what I want. And and um, in terms of what what I would like to see next, is I would like to see myself fighting international fight week in July. But that's obviously I'm like. Ahead, yeah, that's- no, no, no. That's that, that's smart. You're you're sort of putting a blueprint out for the rest of the year, which is uh, smart. There. Um, I know after your last fight, it looked like you wanted to fight Mackenzie Dern. I don't know if you heard the news today that she's pregnant. Did I you see that? <laughs> that kind of threw me off, but you know what? I mean, good for her, I guess. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't have any thoughts on it. I kind of knew that you know she's going to have success no matter what because of what she's done in the world. Um, but yeah, it's, like I. I had a hope that I would fight her, but at the same time, I kind of knew it would never happen. Um, and I'm not bummed about it, you know, uh, just because I know like life happens and and I don't get my heart set on anything. Um, well, I, I don't know if you're aware of this. I, I don't mean to interrupt, but uh, I, I interviewed Randa Marcos today, and she said that she had a boat agreement with Mackenzie, and then the fight just went away, and then we find out she's pregnant. So I don't know if you're aware of that or not, that she was, it looked like she was going to fight Randa Marcos. Yeah, 115. Yep. I did not know that. I did not yeah. know that. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what to say about that. You yeah, know, yeah, no, no, it is what it is. No, I just, I thought I'd mention that just because I know you wanted to fight her, and I thought that was interesting that they were trying to get Randa to fight her. So that, that's kind of interesting. Uh, before I let you go, I know you got stuff to do. Uh, George St. Pierre retired this week. Just your reaction to that? One of the all-time greats hanging them up. Um. Yeah. I mean, he's definitely one of the one of the people that kind of made all of this. Uh, a thing. Um, so I mean, he's he's definitely a legend. Um, I wish I would have followed his career a little more than I did because I'm, I'm so young that I never really, you know, back when he was actually fighting in his prime, I didn't really pay attention to it. Uh, I'll have to go back and watch a lot more of his stuff because, you know, I mean, it's kind of history, you know, of our sport. So, um, but yeah, I mean, he's smart to retire now because. You know, I mean, as great as he is and as great as all of these fighters are, at some point they have to do that. And uh, it's easier to see them do that now than, you know, ending up, you know, fighting too long and, and, and beating their head continuously beaten because, you know, there are the younger fighters that no matter how good you are or how good you were, there's always going to be the younger athletes coming up and it's going to be more, uh, more athletic, more physical, whatever. And it's just because of the age and, and the sooner that people, even the greats get out because of the young, the young people in the sport. I think that's, I think that's a lot smarter. And, um, I respect that a lot more than I do, you know, someone who stays in too long. I mean, yeah, you're tough. And I'm like, that's about it. You're tough. I respect that a lot, but I also want to see someone who's tough and smart and who can, who can go and take that and, and do other things with it. You know what I mean? He could, Potentially going to other so. Yeah, and he says he's set. He says he's set for life as well. So I mean that that's good to hear too. So it's like he has he has a career after this, which is important. Um, I was going to ask you one more question about George, but uh, I don't know if you'll be able to answer it. I was I was going to ask you what your favorite fight was of his, but uh, kind of what I'm hearing is you haven't seen a lot of his fights. I couldn't answer that because I haven't seen them all. Um, I couldn't answer that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, I like the honesty. I appreciate it. And uh, this is going to be a great card. It's coming up here March 23rd. It is at UFC on ESPN Plus 6. Uh, Macy, thank you so much. Always great catching up. Just remind people where they can find you on social media. And if you have any sponsors or shout outs, the floor is yours. Yeah. Um, my Instagram handle is at Macy Barber. And then, um, you know, I have tons of sponsors working on new ones. Uh, Message Flow, uh, Matt Beeman, he's huge help for this camp and every camp that I've had. Um, I couldn't be where I am without them. Um, so that was that's super helpful. And then uh, my brother and I have been working on a YouTube channel, so you can go follow that as well. Uh, Macy Barber is the YouTube channel. Um, you know, fun fun videos on there, and we'll kind of we're gonna try to upload more of those. So it'll be good. 